Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. As part of your knowledge series today, we'll be discussing a very important topic out of modern India, which is moderates and the international movement. This topic, though has more type of mains questions, can also come in the prelims exam. But before we begin, we all, you already know that our target mains program is already running on the BEP app or the Baiju's Exam Prep app. And I believe and I hope that you have joined those sessions on the app itself. If you haven't, you can download the app through the link given in the description below. And the basic point is we are doing static, we're doing current affairs, we're doing ethics, we're doing essay. Everything is being done within the time frame of a week. And we're also evaluating your answers on Sunday within one hour and sending it to you so that we can know how you're writing your answer. With this, we can get into the topic for today, which is moderates and the INC and specifically the international movement. Basically, let's try to understand the context first and then we can go into moderate politics. As we know, in 1885, the International Congress was formed and the, there's a lot of speculation over how the INC was formed. There's a safety wall theory, which technically was based on the seven volumes of what are called the Dufferin-Hume uh, correspondence, but technically that was never found. And that was a way to discredit the INC itself to a mouthpiece of the British. However, the safety wall theory does not stand the chance of time or generally because of the sources which are available. Therefore, what we believe is that the INC is nothing but a culmination of a long drawn process of rising nationalism since 1857. And that can be explained through a different, different organizations which were coming through before INC itself. And over and above that, what is more important is that there's a rising consciousness when it comes to nationalism based on modern education. So it was the middle class intelligentsia, it was general the discontent. The INC was not the first organization, but was the first pan-Indian organization when it comes to its composition itself. But the first 15 years was a problem. So what we have to discuss is the Indian National Congress formed in 1885, sure. Then basically not based on safety wall, it was not a mouthpiece of the British or a safety wall to give out the steam of nationalism. It was an organic development. It was organically developed through the period of time over and above what was happening in Bengal, Madras and uh, Delhi and Calcutta region. Now, once the INC is formed, we have to understand what is its agenda. And therein comes moderate politics. Basically, between 1885 and 1905, we call it the moderate phase. Moderate phase first was based on what we call as the economic critique of colonialism. We'll talk about that also. But this 1885 to 1905 period is important because this period is like the formative phase of the INC. Though they did not achieve too much, basically they were able to keep their agenda in such a way that they would not be squashed by the British somehow. Though the British did respond in a very, very repressive way, still 1885 to 1905 is the moderate formative phase of the INC. And we now need to understand what is their agenda generally, how do they start, who are the leaders, and what is their achievement and what are their shortfalls. This is what the video is about. Basically, as we say, the early Indian nationalists which fall between 1885 to 1905 after the formation of the INC are called moderates. And these moderates, in a way, are important because they create the base on which the Swadeshi movement will launch in 1905. Now, what was their critique of British colonialism? It was based on the most important concept which was introduced by Dadabai Naroji and over and above that R.C. Dutt, G.V. Joshi and Justice Ranade or M.G. Ranade. What do we call it? We call it the economic critique of colonialism or the economic basis of nationalism. What was their basic argument? which was the drain theory. The drain theory was that there is a systematic way in which revenue has been extracted from India and is being transferred via different channels. Channels may be the home charges, maybe it be the OPM purchases, maybe it commodity trade, maybe it the raw materials. What they argued was through various, various channels, they were sending this to the mother country. There is a separate concept it, uh, all together, which is what is called the economic critique of colonialism. Now, the drain theory became the base on which the moderates were able to first understand that there was a problem. Basically, till 1885, there was still a belief in the benevolence of the British that the British will develop India. That is why what Dadawai Naroji called 
his book was poverty and un-British rule in India because they believe that the British wherever they go they always produce development and good things. However, the basic data which Naroji, Dutt, Joshi and Ranade were able to study was showing that India was not getting developed but underdeveloped. So basically drain theory became the base on which 1885 the basic critique of nationalism. See because between 1857 and 1885 what is the point is that there is a rise of this consciousness that something is wrong. Unfortunately, it took us close to 100-120 years to realize that the British were actually systematically exploiting India and not actually adding something. So basically moderate politics is this realization that there is a problem. The problem is that India is not getting developed but famines are becoming more and more common. Poverty is the new reality of India and this economic critique will become the basis of moderate nationalism. So what I have done till this point is moderates, what is the time period? 1885 to 1905, the basic argument or on the basis on which moderates develop is Dada by Naroji and others who argue about drain theory. Drain theory, we can have a separate video on that. The basic is that drain theory argues that India was being systematically exploited via various channels and revenue was not directly, however indirectly, directly a lot of different diverse channels were being used to send money, revenue, finance, everything. To the mother country. Now, once they are able to realize that okay, there is a problem, then these following leaders become very, very important and they are together called the moderates, which is W.C. Banerjee, Rajpihari Ghosh, not Bose, remember Ghosh, Surindranath Banerjee, and R.C. Dutt from Bengal. Dadabhai Naroji, Gopal Krishna Gokhale, Firosha Mehta, the most important, he will be a very very important figure when it comes with the Surat split and Justice M.G. Ranade from Maharashtra and Gujarat. We have P.R. Naidu, Sulmanam Ayyar and Anand Charlu from Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu. Then you have Pandit Madan Mohan Valviya from Uttar Pradesh on what was called United Province then. And you have Hume and Vedaban, liberal Englishmen. A.O. Hume very very important figure in organizing and structure giving structure to the INC itself and Wedderburn is his biographer and he was one of the most important figures after A.O. Hume's exit. Wedderburn and Hume were the ones why there was a, a lot of confusion over the formation of the INC that because it was believed that A.O. Hume was the one who created the INC. However, it is not that technically not true. He was a civil servant. He was important in structuring the INC not creating it. But basically all these leaders together are called the moderates. Now, let's try to understand what is their politics. Before I go into the slides, let's try to understand it here only. Very basically, moderates have two basic agendas. And though it was based on a flawed understanding, let's try to understand that. What the moderates argue is that the British are in a way still here to do good. There was an inherent belief in the benevolence of the British. However, what they believed was that the grassroots reality of India was not known to the British. So what they believe is that what was happening on the grassroots level at India and where the British was sitting, which is the imperial government, there was a gap. And what the moderates generally believed was that once they will point out to the British that there is a problem, the British will respond. So first principle is that they had an inherent belief in the benevolence of the British, they believed that there was a communication gap. That the British were not getting to know that famines were happening properly or the poverty in India was growing or there was drain or there was corruption. They believed that the imperial government in some way was not cognizant of that. Second is they also believed that in the people sitting in London, specifically the parliament, is also not aware. They believe, okay, if this is corrupt and this whole system is corrupt, maybe when the parliament, which is a democratic institution, it will get to know that the East India Company and now the Crown Rule was been ruling with a lot of autocratic power, maybe they will respond. So basically, the concept is that the British will respond once they get to know. So there's an inherent belief in the British. Second basic principle is that they believed not in removing colonialism but reforming colonialism. For them, 
the presence of the British was important. It needed to reform its own agenda and its own method, but not be rejected. They were not rejecting colonialism, but reforming colonialism. And that you will see from their objectives. When we will see the objectives, you will realize that it was not about that we reject. It was not Swaraj. It was not self-rule. It was that we want to be under the British, but the British need to change their little bit orientation and how they are ruling us, basically. And then they had a two-pronged way of going forward, two way they went forward. First was that they tried to first create a basic nationalistic consciousness by these December sessions. So more or less all INC sessions except for special sessions happen in December. Three days they would meet together, started with a very small number but by the time we come to 1908-1909 close to 1400 members used to meet. So it was about creating a nationalist consciousness, basically spreading the message or the critique of the Dada Bhai Naroji or what we call as the economic critique of colonialism. But the second was to now tell the British public, tell the British Parliament, tell the Secretary of State that there is an issue in India. As I said, the basic understanding was that the British don't know there is a problem. And once they get to know about that, maybe they will change their understanding. So this is a very important point you need to understand because their PPP, what we call the three P's, was based on this basic assumption, prayer, petition and very rarely protest. So what is their approach? As I told you, three things need to keep in mind. Inherent belief in colonialism, and the British and their benevolence that they are good, they just don't know. Second was that they believed that once the public opinion will change in Britain, things will change in India that will lead to policy change. Third and very important point, reforming colonialism, not removing. And very basically, in the end, the concept is that we will work through prayer, petition and protest, but very rarely. The fact was, it was about petitioning, telling the government that there is a problem, please help us. It was about petitioning, that there is there are famines in India, please do something. There needs to be more Indians in the ICS, please do something. There was this pleasing, please, petition, the most important part of their method. So let's elaborate it on, read it out. The moderate political activities involved constitutional agitations within the confines of law and showed a slow but orderly political progress. Basically, this was what does it mean constitutional agitation meaning whatever the British were allowing them with the available uh, Indian Council Acts and specifically Indian Council Act 1861. Now, what does it say within the confines of law because it was not about militant politics, it was not about uh, hero, uh, individual heroism, it was not about going against the law, it was not about non-cooperation, it was not about civil disobedience, it was just about basically constitutional agitation, prayer petition. Now, one criticism which I believe is unjustified is that the moderates did it on purpose and they should be condemned for this. Yes, they did it on purpose. But basically the moderates were right because of the fact that in the place they were, they were technically placed in a period of 1885 to 1905. During this period, if the British became too, if the moderates became too aggressive, the British would have in a way suffocated the INC in its birth itself. So basically this wheel of constitutionalism or this method of constitutionalism, the moderate method was relevant in the moment that because it allowed the British to not come down too much on the, on the INC. Because if the INC would have been dead by 1900, 
then Indian national movement would have been totally different. Basically, we can't blame these personalities for being pro-British because we believe that they were pro-British because they were doing what they would do in their own context, which is that they knew that they needed to have a very middle part, had to thread the needle in order to send their message. This is the base on which later Bal Gangadhar Tilak or Lal Ajpat Rai or Vipin Chandra Pal will change the politics to extremism. But if moderate politics would not have allowed the INC to grow from what it was in 1885 to 1905, it would not have led to become a very important body for the Indian national movement itself. So basically, it's very easy to criticize moderates, but you need to understand, it's like understanding the British attitude. Once the British power started to wade or fade, then INC becomes its own. But moderate politics is equally important for that period of time. Then the moderates believed that the British basically wanted to be just to the Indians, but were not aware of the real conditions. This is the basic illusion in which they were there. I would, I, we would as an academician, as students of history, we would defend the moderates in saying that, okay, you did it because the British would come very heavy handed on you if you were too radical. However, this illusion was their own, which is that they were just and not aware of the real conditions. The British were very, very aware of the real conditions and they never had anything called justness. Basically, their method was relevant, but their ideas were based on a lot of misconceptions. So, to do what they wanted to do, two-pronged methodology was there. First, create a strong public opinion to arouse consciousness and nationalist spirit and then educate and unite people on common political questions. This was about creating the base for nationalism, which they will be able to do to some level, but the problem was it was very elite politics. Then, persuade the British government and the British public opinion to introduce reforms in India on the lines laid out by the nationalist. And the reforms will come. Indian Council Act of 1892. We will have Morley Minto reforms. Montague claims for But basically, after Indian Council Act 1892, they knew that the British were now just acting. Because by the time the next one will come in, Morley Minto 1909, it was already game over. And extremists had already taken over. The basic point was, the Indian Council Act 1892 was like the litmus test. If the British really had been a good, just power, it would have responded in the right way. There was already one Indian Council Act which was there, 1861. They wanted it to expand, to become bigger, but there was very limited structure and limited sections were given in the 1892 Indian Council Act. Then, they used the method of prayer and petition, and if that failed, then they resorted to constitutional agitation. So, prayer, petition, and this is protest, but within the government itself. So, the three P's of the moderates. Now, what did the moderates want? What did they agitate on? Basically, this is, a, this is what tells you what the moderates really wanted. And this also gives you the nature of the moderate politics. So, first was, and this was a very standard thing which everybody wanted, which is Indianization of government services. They argued that the ICS should be opened even more to the Indians and we should have more role in our own administration. So it was about more employment in the government of India. Then, call for separation of judicial from or judicial power from executive functions. Meaning, because most of the officers, specifically the district collector, which you want to become, had both revenue rights or revenue powers, and in some cases even judicial powers, and which was technically true for DM also. A DM had two powers before the reforms were brought in, which is that he had what is called civil administrative powers and he also had judicial powers. So he was an executive and a judiciary at the same point of time. They basically wanted to say that you remove what is called separation of power should be there. The same person who has administrative power should not have judicial power. And this will change after 1900, but basically there was a major hue and cry over separation of power. Then, Oppressive and tyrannical bureaucratic and expensive time consuming judicial system. Basically, they said that the bureaucracy was corrupt, 
the bureaucracy needed to change and the solution was adding Indians into it and the very very expensive because lawyers were needed the three tiered structure from the circuit to the district to the high court then to the supreme court then to the so there were four different levels of judicial mechanisms and that every time took a lot of money and you needed lawyers very specialized in English jurisprudence which needed to be employed to go to the judicial authorities so judicial reform along with executive reforms these are the two basic things which we are seeing which is separation of powers and judicial and executive reform then call for increase in expenditure on welfare they believed that health education especially elementary education irrigation works improvement in agriculture was very important this was the this was the economic nationalist speaking that there was a need for the development of India in the nationalistic sense but in the economic sphere more than anything so it was about India going forward and developing as an important superpower or a, at least an important player in world politics when it comes to economics so the economy of India needed to be strengthened and herein comes the the basic critique and the call for change then civil rights such as rights to speech thought association and a free press press regulation as you know is again a very important topic in modern India from vernacular press act to what is going to happen in the in the uh, first world war period the second world war period what the Rollet act it, itself was doing a lot of different acts from licensing to regulation to vernacular press freedom was a very important aspect related to moderate politics and this was important because the press would allow nationalist feeling to grow further then and there was a basic point was they wanted to spread modern democratic ideas which they were able to because freedom in the true sense of Swaraj was now going to become a very important demand by 1905 so basically the moderates created the base on which the extremists actually could argue for a step further we technically discredit the moderates by saying that they were moderates but basically when we talk about Swaraj Atma Shakti which is going to come as a word in the in the Swadeshi movement these words were only possible because the meaning meaning of freedom had now spread throughout the society itself further simultaneous exam in India for the ICS field again it was about ICS examination this should not be just held in London but in India also and raising the maximum age at 23 so that Indians could also perform well and give the exam as much as possible and this would stop the drain of money because a lot of salaries was going to the British officers which could be negated by adding Indian officers now basically what was their achievement what is their evaluation now though they were able to get very basic things some form of press freedom some form of constitutional rights may the 1892 act itself being a little bit of success their method never worked and the problem was that their method would not work itself because of three very important words it was an elite elite only based on educated Indians The fact is that it was limited to Bombay, Madras and Calcutta urban centers. So it's urban and the composition of the INC, all the members which we see, either journalists, lawyers or basically landlords. So upper caste dominated, upper class dominated and zamindars and lawyers are there. Basically what we believe is that the whole strata which was created out of English education was actually responding. The basic weakness of moderate politics is that it did not take in the rural masses. Peasant worker, there was no understanding that they could also be nationalistic. So what moderate politics is, is elite politics. Elite, upper caste, urban, educated politics. So there is no mention of depressed classes, there is no mention of women, there is no mention of basic rights of workers, no mention of peasants. It was just about getting more employment in the British itself. So if you look at the demands which I showed you, there is nothing for the masses. It's just about some welfare measures, give us more employment, give us separate the powers. It's about them, it's not about the people. 
so moderate politics is very very limited in character so basically they did not believe in the capacity of the masses to act they did not have the understanding that the peasant will become an important actor and that is the whole point gandhi will be the one who will harness the power of peasant and workers later the cpi for workers lack of radical and militant political approach it was prayer petition pleasing the government they did not understand that the british were not here for development the basic point was that their benevolence was misplaced though it had a lot of members out of different places from india it did not have an pan indian organizational impact meaning the inc was just a three day conference and there was a lot of crit criticism from lal lajpat rai who used to argue that it is just a three day picnic it's a three day party which happens they all come they talk about the british they talk about critique they pass a resolution and then they go back it was not about it was not about peasant politics it was not about year long politics this will change very quickly by the time swadeshi will come in and how the extremists will start start to change the inc itself but moderate politics was like that itself and neglect of youth women peasant or workers so before i take questions one thing should be very very clear ppp the three p's protest prayer and petition protest in very very limited constitutional way now the next thing is do remember it is very easy to criticize a moderate but the point is they were a product of their own context and their politics was only possible within that time frame itself the british would have come down very very repressively if it would have been a radical organization so the conservatism of the moderates is justified in a way because they had to survive and walk the needle or walk the thread itself which was called nationalism and they were the ones who will create the base on which the moderate politics will give way to what we call as extremist politics and extremist politics and swadeshi and then gandhi so technically it's like a building block if you argue that why did we have moderate phase it is a building block you have moderate phase first they create basic consciousness then you have the extremist phase they were the ones who now start to argue for things more than just constitutional changes and there comes then gandhian influence and gandhian politics and then after gandhian politics as you will see after 1942 it will become mass politics or mass nationalism without even the support of gandhi gandhi was not there in quit india but they will still take the movement forward so it's a building block it's about a natural progression of our indian national movement right so with this the moderate politics is done i hope that you understand what it means who the people are and what is the basic point let's take the questions here moderate extremist similarities in the way that both were against colonialism but basically one wanted to reform one wanted to remove extremists will want to remove colonialism they will try to reform colonialism there's the similarity is that what links them is colonialism uh in present context especially in bureaucracy what are the qualities and work done by moderate ministry should be adopted by bureaucracy bureaucracy see Uh, as bureaucrats you need to be a moderate obviously you can't be radical so as the future is officer as the future ifs officer moderate politics is important for you because moderates teach you how to understand the context in which you are rising so you can't be a radical at a point in which the british are nervous about their own rule so moderate politics is about smart politics and their economic critique was extremely important in that regard who are more popular moderates or extremists both because inc is equally popular extremists both are there's no don't start to weigh them because that would be the wrong way to understand a national movement extremists have their own uh, base moderates will later become very very important gop gop gopal krishna gokhale and firosha mehta were equally important extremists will start to have a larger base with bal gangadhar tilak tilak was much bigger as a as a personality but equally surendranath banerji both it's not that they are better and worse don't judge them on their popularity moderates failed yes sure why not moderates did fail they did not get what they wanted but for us in the larger story of national movement they succeeded in what they wanted to do which is to create a base on which national movement could go forward but basically has failed so did moderate stimulate yes extremism was a direct impact of the failure of moderate politics so if the moderates would not have failed extremism would not never have risen basically gandhi also had a moderate phase which was south africa first phase till 1906 thereafter he also went for satyagraha 
every person has a moderate phase where you try to look for and see what is going to happen. If moderate would not have been there, extremism would technically never rise itself. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So with this, I have taken most of the questions. So I will see you very soon with two very important sessions on art and culture and, the, and one on Vedic age. So we will be talking about Gandhara and we will also do a Gandhara school of art and we will try to now mix and match in this week. So three more sessions in this week with me. Thank you so much. I will see you in the next video with Gandhara school of art. Thank you.